Hi everyone, this is Peyton Hatch. And in today's video, I'm going to show how to take a surface from Civil 3D and a DXF file and load them into like a Captivate. And there, we're gonna do this a couple different ways because of course you can take a surface file directly from Civil 3D as a XML file right into Captivate. At that same time, I do like bringing them into Infinity first. So that is the workflow I'm going to, uh, to show you first. And so all I've done is I've taken a DXF file from Civil 3D and I've dragged and dropped it in. I'll rotate this around so you can see some of it's down here at elevation zero, which is fine. And then up here at the top, I've got what looks like to be some contour lines and, uh, and oh, looks like we got a big pit or something here. And let me upload a surface that came out of Civil 3D so right here, here's the surface that came in from Civil 3D. And to be honest, I'm not, I'm not quite sure how the surface got this way. So this was just the export. And so I am going to redo some of this inside of Infinity just so I can show you, hey, I think this is what it should look like. And so I'll show you what, what all entails there. So turn this back on. So when you get your file as a DXF, one of the things you'll have to do with inside of infinity because it's essentially an attachment is to select all the lines up there and then you can right click and you can go copy from CAD and I can just do all from layer and what that will will do so I can turn off my CAD file now is it'll import all those lines now as an actual Leica entity you can see it renames them but these are now an object within inside of the the software with inside of infinity that can be used and it also generate coordinates on all the endpoints so you see we have all these endpoints anytime there was a geometry change it created points on those and what i did is i took all those points in fact we'll just <clears throat> we'll just do it right now turn this back on turn that off i'll make a selection of all these points and these lines highlights them all and I'll go up here to surfaces, and it will be, because it's not a point cloud data, it'll be a 2.5D surface. So we'll click on that, and it is going to run through, and it will generate a surface using the points, using the lines as break lines. It'll create a, a very good-looking surface, as long as the, the data you're using is, of course, good data. And uh, so that's, that might take just a second to go through. All right, that took about two minutes, and now I have a surface that has been created. So let me turn off the, uh, the points. Heck, I'll turn off the lines, and here's the surface that it created, 2.6D, that's, that's fine. Um, I can rename this surface just to uh, 2.5D test. There we go, we'll apply that. Not that rename. And now that it's renamed, zoom in here, and you can see we have now our triangles. Let's turn our lines and areas back on so we can just make sure, yes, it looked like it, it grabbed everything the way we wanted it to. We have very good triangles. And if I grab one of the lines, say drop those lines on and off, you can see it's actually following them perfectly across. So you know this is good. But I can grab that line. There it is. Right click, right click on the line, you can see it remove from, which means it's, it is in the surface as a break line already. And so I don't have to add it as a break line, which I could have added it later. So I do have a, a good surface file. Looks like it's got the trench in here. Um, yep, some information down here that it pulled. And we'll look at this little pile right here. There we go. Yeah. Nice little retention pond. So I am I'm happy with the surface. Now the thing is, the surface is big because of course it has contour lines across this entire thing, and maybe you're only working in one small area. So let's uh let's turn this surface off. And uh, we'll turn on this at DXF again, go back down to a top-down view. So this line here, this area here is something I drew. So this was the DXF. So clearly this is the extent of the project that I'm working in. And so what I did is I just go into my features tab and I created an area and I just snap, snap, snap all the way around until I created this area right here. 
Now what I want to do is if I've got my 2D test surface, I can click on that line, that new area right there, right click, new area, cut surface with boundary. That line now becomes the boundary um, only in the 2D. Like if I were to use it as a break line, so add to surface as a boundary, it would then be a break line. Um, we're not doing, we're cutting the surface with a boundary. And that will then, well, cut our boundary. Just gonna cut that through, give it just a moment, and we'll have a nice clean surface of just the area that we wanted. And that is done. So now you can see my surface file is a lot more manageable. I'll turn off my lines, turn off this DXF. There's my surface. Let's, uh, let's view it as a shaded with edges. We'll rotate this around in 3D, and there are all my triangles. So nice, beautiful model that I can put into my into my controller now as a very manageable file. All right, and now that we have our surface in a way that we that we want to be able to use this surface, we can now export the surface out to our collector. Now, of course, if this surface would have been generated in Civil 3D just comes out as an XML, which is what uh, this surface was right here. This was an XML that came out of Civil 3D. I just, I didn't like what it looked like. I wanted a more complete surface. And so that's why I'm just basically using the contour lines. I uh, better generated a full surface around the thing. All right, so I can take now this surface and I can go export selection. And here's my options. I'm going to send it out as a DBX. Now I could send it out as an XML. And that's an XML that would go into Civil or any other program. But we're going into Captivate. We might as well directly go into a Leica format. Because even if you send out an XML, we accept it. But the Leica data collector is going to convert that into a Leica format. With any Every uh, piece of equipment is going to do that regardless of who it is or what it is. So you might as well just have your processing power of your computer export out the format that it wants. So we're going to go surface do DTM job. I don't care about lines and areas. I only want the surface to go out and I want it's a single surface. So I might as well do a single job. If I had multiple surfaces, I could send out all the surfaces into one single job. And they'd be selectable or they could be multiple jobs, multiple surfaces. So we're going to send that out, DXF and surface test. Uh, we'll just rename it. Now I'm going to have it go out to the correct location. Let's go out to this location right here, the default location. I'm not going to have it create a subdirectory, and I'm just going to press export. Boom. And it's going to export out that surface. Surface as now a job. And at the same time, I'll go ahead and export out the same surface as an XML, just so you can see what that will look like going into the controller. So I'll grab that same surface, export selection. This time I will go out as an XML. As you can see, it's going to grab the surface itself, XML to surf to serve it now, and we're just going to press export. Um, I'm just going to call it XML and export. And there goes my data. All right, now that it's been exported, you can tell it's exported by going down here to the archive. You can see I've got a DBX and an XML. Well, let's go open containing folder. And here it is. Ah, I should have gone and done a subdirectory. You see how the surface test is not in a good location? I don't have it combined. This is this is actually a good thing. Now I can show you what, what I did wrong, actually. We'll just delete this out. Oh. Close that back out again. Let's remove this because I don't like that export. And let's try this again. So click on the surface, export selection, and it's going to go to a DTM as a single job. This time I will do create subdirectory. And we'll just call surface and export. 
Now let's see what that looks like with a subdirectory. So let's go open containing folder. Ah, much better. Now you can see that project, that DXF is actually now in a folder. And there's the surfaces right there. That one. And uh, so yes, that looks, um, that looks much better. So here's what we need to do. We need to put these in a location on our USB stick or SD card. For this case, it's going to be on my simulator that you can find now on the simulator. I'm going to load them onto the SD card just for kicks and giggles. Now I'm going to go here to my data folder. And the data folder is going to be where I drop the XML file. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that XML file right here. And over here on the SD card <clears throat> inside of the DBX. I'm going to drop that right there. Oh, I actually need to cut these out and put them right here. There we go. Surface. So there is everything we need. Much better. So I've exported all my data. Let's go over to my simulator. I put it in the correct location, which the project DBX actually goes, like I said, in the, uh, into the DBX folder. So there's our surfaces. And we then put the, um, the actual XML in the XML. Oh, let's go right here. Let's go settings, tools, transfer user objects, and object to transfer. Now I can do a job. I'll just show you what we what, what this created here. So you can see I have a DXF and surface job on my SD card. That's because when we exported it out, it was DXF and surface. So it goes and it creates a job ahead of time um, that you could load right into your controller. And so I can go ahead and export out or import in the job, DXF and surface, and press OK. Do you wish to transfer more objects? Yes. And now I can go transfer in a DTM. Oh, up here at the top, right there. And you can see surfaces is what pulls up. And I will press OK. I'm not going to transfer any more objects. So let's go unlock that. Let's see if my project is in here. Right there. DXO, DXF and surfaces is that project. Well, it looks like I don't have a geode field file, but that's fine. Properties. Over here, link design data. Let's use a DTM. And there is our surfaces. You can see it also references surfaces on the SD card, but um, I got a simulator. So we'll just say it's on the internal memory. And I'm going to press store. Excellent. So let's go to my 3D viewer. And there is my surface. There is my surface. It is in and it looks great. And I, of course, can change the color of the surface if I needed to, to, to make it pop better. Um, that is all right here in the gear settings. And under your checkbox, you go over here to DTM. And you can display it, display triangulators as shaded. Yeah, sure, we'll make them shaded. And now you can see, I don't know, I think that looks a whole lot nicer actually to visualize it. So close that out. And we'll go just press OK. So now let's bring in an XML. Let's view it that way. So I'll go back over here to this job I created called Surface Test. And this time as if we had an XML coming directly from the, uh, the controller, or from AutoCAD, sorry. So I'll click on it. I'll go to Import Data. Now I'm just going to grab XML, and here it is, SD card from file, DXF surfaces XML, right there, and import a DTM. You can see there's where it's going to put it, because an XML file can contain lots of different objects in it. So we'll go DXF and surface, and OK. I'm going to import that DTM. You see that takes a little bit more time, and you can imagine had that happened on say a CS20, that could have taken a while. So I prefer going it through infinity first and then you're just transferring a job because then your computer does all the processing. 
I, I just think that's a significantly better way to do it. As you see, there is my, um, there's that surface that automatically got attached. And I can go here to 3D Viewer, which I get the exact same thing. Oh, it's right here. Well, oh, where is it? Heck, I'm not even sure where it is. Let's just delete this point. Delete that point. Yes. And now we'll do a zoom extent. There she is. So, yeah, I highly prefer going through Infinity, but the XML route does work just fine. And you can now use this surface to go out and get cuts and fills. And I, I hope that uh, I helped everybody out. So thank you.